Hello students, today I am going to discuss with you the cost of retained earnings. Whenever an investor invests its money in any security, there is an expectation attached with its investment. So the cost of capital of a firm is nothing but the minimum rate of return expected by its investor. So the same expectation of the investor becomes the cost of capital of a firm. And fulfilling the expectation of an investor becomes the main objective of every firm. But in the case of retained earning, it is sometimes argued that the retained earning does not involve any cost because the firm is not required to pay dividends on the retained earnings. However, the shareholders expect a return on the retained earning because retained earning accrues to a firm only because of some sacrifice made by the shareholders in not receiving the dividends out of the available profits. Because whenever a firm is having profits, the main two decision that the firm need to make is that whether the firm should distribute the available profits in terms of dividends. So whenever a firm retains a particular amount in the form of retained earnings out of the profits, then the investor needs to forego the dividends. Because if an investor would have got this amount of dividend, then he could have invested this amount somewhere else in alternative opportunities from which he could also have earned a particular amount of returns. So by not getting the dividend and letting the firm to retain that particular amount in the form of retained earning for expansion and diversification, basically the investor is foregoing that much return which he could have got by investing his fund in alternative opportunity. Therefore, the cost of retained earnings may be considered as the rate of return which the existing shareholders can obtain by investing the after-tax dividend in alternative opportunity of equal qualities. Thus, the cost of retained earning can also be termed as the opportunity cost of dividends foregone by the investor. So, the cost of retained earning will be calculated as the cost of equity share capital in case of growth where the dividend grows with time. So the formula to calculate the cost of retained earning will be KR where K stands for cost, R stands for retained earning and formula will remain same as in the case of equity share capital where the dividend grows with time therefore the formula will be D1 where D1 stands for the dividends which the investor has foregone divided by NP, NP stands for the net proceeds plus G where G stands for growth. But it is important to note that shareholders usually cannot obtain the entire amount of retained profits by the way of dividends even if there is 100% payout ratio. It is so because the shareholders are required to pay tax on their dividend income. Moreover, if the shareholders wishes to invest their after-tax dividend income in alternative securities, they may have to incur some cost of purchasing the securities such as brokerage. So in the nutshell, the investor cannot invest whole of the amount of dividends which the investor is getting out of the profits. Hence, the effective rate of return realized by the shareholders from new investment will be somewhat lesser than their present return from the firm. So, the new and accurate formula to calculate the cost of retained earning can be written as KR is equals to the previous formula where D stands for dividends and P stands for net receipts plus G wherein G stands for growth. All of this needs to multiply it with 1 minus T where T stands for taxes that the investor needs to pay because dividends are tax deductible and again multiplying it with 1 minus B where B stands for cost of purchasing new securities which we often call it as brokerage cost which is being charged by each and every alternative security. So therefore, the cost of retained earning may also be considered as the rate of return which the existing shareholders can obtain by 
investing the after tax dividends in alternative opportunities of equal qualities thank you